Hi, welcome to the video on the most controversial subject on the web, authentication, also called OAuth. Authentication is very hard to get right, and there isn't any silver bullet or a bulletproof solution that has a 100% guarantee. There might be some concepts here that some of you, especially the beginners, find difficult to understand. But stick with me, I'll do my best to explain these concepts. Authentication is used in all serious web applications. Having knowledge on security is crucial for you to become a good engineer. Since authentication is hard to get right, there are companies such as Auth0 and Okta who have dedicated resources to solve this problem. They also have teams of engineers way smarter than you or I who build authentication systems, but it comes at a cost. But hey Alpha, what if I don't have the money to pay for such tools? Should I still go ahead and build my own solution? I have seen other developers build their own solutions. Should I also do the same? The answer to all those questions is why we are here today. Often at times in web development, we hear these two words, authentication and authorization. They might sound similar, but they are very distinct security processes. Authentication is the act of validating that users are who they claim to be. Whereas, authorization gives users permissions to access a resource on a platform. Auth on the web is commonly achieved via username and passwords, two-factor or multi-factor authentication, one-time pins or passwords, etc. There are two different ways of authentication on the web, stateful and stateless authentication. Stateful authentication, also called session-based or cookie-based auth. It's stateful because the server or the backend stores user properties or the user sessions. These user sessions can be stored in a database or in a memory data store such as Redis. These user sessions are stored in a cookie which is sent to the client or the browser. This is how it goes down. A user registers on a website, for example, with an email and password. When the user then logs in, the server creates a session with a unique session reference ID. The server then issues a cookie with the session ID to the client or browser. While the user stays logged in, the cookie will be sent along with every subsequent request. The server then compares and validates the cookie against the session store and then grants access. When the user logs out, the server destroys the session ID and clears the cookie. Cookie, cookie, cookie. What is this cookie thing and how does it look like? A HTTP cookie, also known as a web cookie or a browser cookie, is a small piece of data that a server sends to the user's web browser. The browser may store it and send it back with later requests to the same server. Cookies are signed with a secret that is a hash-based message authentication code HMAC, to mitigate against exploitation. Cookies are mainly used for three purposes. That is, session management, personalization, and tracking. In session management, it's used to keep track of anything a server should remember, such as logins or anything else. For personalization, cookies help to keep track of user preferences, themes, and other settings. For tracking, cookies help with recording and analyzing user behavior. How do we ensure cookie security? There are a couple of attributes or flags attached to cookies to ensure that they are sent securely and are not accessed by unintended parties or scripts. These are the secure flag, HTTP only flag, same site flag. A cookie with a secure attribute or flag is only sent to the server with an encrypted request over the HTTPS protocol, never with an unsecured HTTP protocol, except when developing locally. This therefore means it can't easily be accessed by a man in the middle attacker. A cookie with the HTTP only attribute or flag is inaccessible to the client side JavaScript. It's only sent to the server. This helps to mitigate against cross site scripting attacks, XSS. The same site flag ensures that a cookie can only be sent from the same domain, meaning a cookie can't be sent across different domains. This provides some protection against cross site request forged attacks, also known as CSRF attacks. Here is a brief explanation of the exploits I have just mentioned. Man in the middle attack is a security exploit in which an attacker intercepts communication between two systems. CSRF is a type of malicious exploit where unauthorized commands are submitted from a user that the web application trusts. An attacker may trick the users of a web application into executing commands of the attacker's choosing, such as transferring funds, changing their email addresses, etc. Cross-site scripting attacks, also known as XSS. 
is a security exploit which allows an attacker to inject into a website malicious client-side code or JavaScript. This code is executed by the victims and lets the attackers bypass access controls and impersonate users. Pros and cons of session-based authentication with cookies. The pros. Session IDs are opaque, meaning that it's only the issuer or the server that can map it back to the data it corresponds to. Cookies can be secured with flags such as HTTP only, secure, and the same site flag to reduce the risk of attack. That being said, remember that HTTP only cookies reduce, not eliminate, the risks of cross site scripting attacks. The HTTP only flag ensures that the cookie is not accessible by client side JavaScript. However, if the attacker manages to inject a malicious script in your front end, then they can use that script to make HTTP requests to your server directly from the victim's browser and the HTTP only cookie which contains the user's valid session ID will be attached to every request so the server will respond to the request without suspecting anything. Cons Horizontal scaling is more difficult to accomplish as the server stores and tracks each user session in memory. Horizontal scaling here means scaling by adding more machines to your pool of resources. They are also still vulnerable to CSRF attacks if not secured. It can be secured by, for example, adding a separate X CSRF token cookie alongside the session cookie. Stateless authentication, also known as token-based authentication, is a way to verify users by having much of the user information data on the client side or the browser storage. Tokens are widely used in single-page web applications, web APIs, and mobile apps. Tokens can either be opaque, like sessions, or self-contained. Self-contained in this context means that they can contain meaningful user data. Self-contained tokens reduce database queries but expose our applications to cross-site scripting attacks. Tokens are signed with a server-side secret to prevent manipulation. The most often used token authentication is the JSON Web Token or JWT. So, what are JWTs? Simply put, JWTs are a URL-safe status protocol for transferring claims. URL safe means it's a string that can safely be put as part of a web application's URL. Claim means some certified information such as user identity, authorization to perform actions, and ownership. A typical JWT consists of a header, payload, or claim, and signature. JWTs can either be stored in cookies or in local storage in your browser. How does JWT authentication work? Users registers on a website, for example, with an email and password. When the user then logs in, the server verifies the credentials against the database. The server then generates a temporary token and embeds user data into it. It sends this token as a header or in the body of the response. While the user stays logged in, the token is stored in the browser storage. This token will then be sent along with every subsequent request. The server then verifies the token for its legitimacy and grants access. When the user logs out, the token is cleared from browser storage. The pros of using JWTs. Horizontal scaling is easier as servers can verify the token by its signature, but this only applies if it's a stateless JWT. Simple load balancing. When working with the tokens, you don't need any shared or distributed cache, all you need is CPU power. JWTs are supported in multiple programming languages as it is an open standard. Front-end and back-end architecture is decoupled, which makes it easier to integrate with a microservice architecture and with mobile applications. JWTs also remain operational even if cookies are disabled in the browser. The cons of using JWTs. Tokens stored on the client storage, especially on local storage with sensitive user information, are vulnerable to XSS attacks, that is the cross-site scripting attacks. The server still has to maintain a blacklist of revoked tokens, for example, when your web app gets hacked and you need to revoke your user sessions, or when a user logs out and you need to revoke their sessions, etc., thus defeating the purpose of being stateless. Tokens stored in cookies are also vulnerable to some XSS attacks, but also expose your applications to some CSRF problems. When scaling applications across multiple servers, then the secret is shared between the servers. My verdict and opinion. I hope you now see why I started off by saying that authentication is hard to get right. I am no security expert or guru, but just an engineer with an interest in security. So you may ask, if I am vulnerable to exploits, regardless of which authentication strategy I use, how should I go about this?
My answer is, it depends on your use case. I personally make my decisions based on the project I am working on and the ease of implementation. I will give you a few examples. When I am implementing a server-side rendered web application, then I use HTTP only session cookies with the secure and same site flags and not JWT. The only downside is that I need to manage a cache on the API side, but this is easily accomplished. If I am building a single page application in React that will be getting data from more than one API or even third party APIs on different domains that I don't have control over and can't send cookies to, then I use token based authentication with JWTs. If I have to use JWTs for my application, I store very minimal user information on the token. I also set a very short expiry time, maximum 10 minutes, then also implement refresh tokens. The refresh tokens generate new access tokens automatically when the access tokens expire if the user is still connected and logged in. To further tighten things up, I also blacklist the refresh tokens on the authorization server and on the client, store the refresh tokens in HTTP only cookies with secure and same site flags. Furthermore, I also ensure that when the user logs out or becomes disconnected, their last issued JWT will become invalid in only 10 minutes, at which point it becomes completely useless to an attacker. In most of the projects I have worked on, I have used session-based authentication with HTTP-only cookies when building single-page applications in React. I use this strategy because I have full control over the API and will not interface with other third-party APIs on other domains. Other additional security measures I've also taken to protect my web apps is enabling two-factor authentication and API throttling. This is also a scenario. If you are ever to build an application where you are not going to revoke JWTs, then you are welcome to use JWTs all the way through. Regardless of the auth mechanism you use, user accounts are still vulnerable to cross-site scripting exploits and there is no silver bullet solution with a 100% guarantee. If you have to build your own auth, kindly don't do it blindly. Use this video as a guide but also do further research. Don't just take my word to be final. New exploits are being discovered daily. I will also be building full stack web apps on this channel, implementing both session based and token based authentication to act as a starting point. Stay tuned. I am open to constructive criticism of my opinions. I would also appreciate it if you would suggest any further ideas on how to better secure our web apps in the comment section below. Looking forward to engaging with you. Cheers.